<laughs> I stride. Rikudo, Stealth, Dragon, Tsukumarokan. Counter Blast 2. Now from your 80 card hand Bermuda Triangle player, pick four cards and those are the ones you keep this turn. Bind the rest. On stride, dominate. Dominate your rearguard and attack your vanguard. Oh, you intercepted to save your four cards still. But wait, there's more. Next, I play Stealth Beast Koku Shigarasu and I activate its skill. Soul Blast three cards and discard two Sentinels. The same protect markers that I got from my prior on hit stride ability. Four plus one minus five is still zero cards in hand. You had nothing to guard with. Now I attack. What's up, amigos? Today we're gonna go over the premium ban list. And wow, we got some predictions that were set true and also some surprises. So let's get right into it. So right off the back with Nubatama. So if you guys haven't noticed, there is a card called Koku Shigarasu that essentially would rip your hand apart, especially when you tie it with strides such as the Unhit, Ren, and of course, Sukunomorakan. These cards in tandem with this card were essentially reduce the hand size significantly to almost zero, if not at zero. So for most players that face against Nubatama, they hated this card. <laughs> uh, for me as a Nubatama player, one of the things that I was doing for this format was actually play testing with this deck. I was actually considering playing this clan for this BCS season, and this card is very powerful. I don't think it's powerful enough where it's like a tier zero type of format deal. Honestly, um, when it comes to certain situations, Nubatama is a very situational deck. And so you, you think of the perfect scenario where you can rip the cards from their hand. But in practicality, when you're playing against decks, they know how to play around it, especially if you know if it's a good player as well. You may be asking, like, but they already have powerful strides like Rin and, and you want this in the mix too. Well, Rin has actually weakened over the years too, especially if they're... If the opponent's going second, they get two tickets that really they can hold on to second stride. And that way, when Rin uses the skill, they could just use the tickets that call from hand to field. Those disappear immediately. So it makes Rin useless. Furthermore, there's other orders in existence that are being used in most decks, such as Sanctitude. And of course, for Bitter Doll, those also vanish, right? And then if against a Protect deck, they also have their Protect Markers. And of course, with History Collection, they're guaranteed to get two Protect Markers, which is literally what Ren asked for. The Unhit Strike also discards a card, but it's not in as impactful. And the setup has to be just right for Nubatama because it can get three to four attacks, but there's not much power or crit pressure during that turn too. So this card really helped a lot, especially as the Nubatama player going second. If they had to use the on his stride and do the turn, they can pair it with this to help kind of equalize the situation in that case too. I think most of us are glad that it actually did get hit. <laughs> so I'm not taking away from that, but I just wanted to elaborate a little bit that this is not like a tier zero card that really needed to be banned, but it was definitely, you know, right there at that point. This opens opportunities for Nubatama players to also explore with different grade threes. We actually have other options such as the Mitsukaze. We also have Fuzin Kango and other grade threes that even Forbidden Doll can use the search targets outside of this card as well. Moving on to Narakami, we have the full Bronto ban. So we already saw this coming as well with Japanese, but I'm sorry, John, <laughs> they hit Vanquisher, our boy. Um, but essentially, whenever you have a Vanquisher Vanguard, which also did get errata with the, the G version, this works as well. So you have double Vanguard attacks. Now, think about it with the on hit stride. If the Norikami player went second, they can do normal stride into Stunverse, use Stunverse's skill, bind a bunch of stuff, draw some cards, then pay the cost of stride with a superior stride to their actual on hit stride because you're technically back on a grade three Vanquisher and you have not received any gifts yet. So then now with the on hit stride, you can generate two Excel markers, draw some power, bind some more cards, and then after the attack and later when you bind something from hand, guess what? full Bronto. So you get to benefit full Bronto even on a stride turn as well. And especially going second, you still have a powerhouse turn, even though you're the going second player. But outside of that, um, I think just in general, just being able to use Narakami strides and having a second Vanguard attack <laughs> is pretty strong. Not to mention the continuous effect of powering up the units as well. So that way, even the rigors could potentially hit over trigger thresholds as well. Narakami is still a top deck and also an underdog, especially with the access of the Eradicator decks and variants. I'm sure Narakami players will find a way to still win in the metagame as well. The next thing is Gold Paladin, so Karina. So Karina's basically essentially created a loop where you can return cards, get power, infinite power. 
just anything with loop is not good, <laughs> especially if it's consistent enough at that point too. So Bushiro is just doing preventive maintenance with us at this point and took it down. And for the last two hits slash on hit, I guess. <laughs> um, so Nightmare Dolls or Pale Moon in general had this choice restriction where it got unrestricted. So the Harry Stride now can be used with Nightmare Doll Alice being in the deck, right? When this happened last year, it really didn't hurt the deck except for the Chaos matchup. I had an interview with Noman and Noman actually mentioned that when he got into top eight, he had to face Chaos and that's where he wished he had this strike still. And that's when it actually matters. Um, most cases, you still have powerful strides such as Dark Lord Princess, you have Yvette, you got the one from the recent the Peak Clan collection from last year as well. So Pale Moon has options already. This wasn't like a, a super buff like Katrina was to Neo Nectar, but this is definitely welcome for the Pale Moon players. The last one is Gear Chronicle. This one I do want to spend a little bit of time. So Entrohara has been a card that a lot of people either want hit or you want to give all the clans the same type of deal where you essentially plus three in your plays with this card. And so this generated a lot of advantage and gave like an edge to the early game and also set you up for consistency, making sure you're right up and right down. With Gear Chronicle, we had the Steam Maiden with the Ingelsa also right down back to grade two. That was it. So then players started using the Chrono Jet and then this would also be a card that could Soul Blast during the battle phase to Soul Blast the Chrono Jet to be able to ride down back to grade two with comprehensive rules interaction. They also have a card like Karunta as well that can Soul Blast, but just having more cards like Entrorata to help with that play is very, very strong too. Furthermore, even in the premium aspect of going into the stride game itself, this will continually draw a lot of advantage. Plus, you are using the Force Marker stack, this will hit and also calling a booster and the booster itself getting stronger by the binded cards. Uh, hits hard <laughs> uh, and so it's just very powerful. Now I do have a, a theory on why it went to one. I think Bushiro really didn't want to completely get rid of it. It, it made it um, in a way where Gear Chronicle players have to work for it. What do I mean by this is that you can search it with like timely plays and so a common example is TikTok. Uh, whenever your grade one attacks at the end of the battle your TikTok can search this, create a column, get plus three, and essentially that's restricted by GB1 because of TikTok. So they want you to at least get to the stride game to at least take advantage of the power that Entrada has. So if Gear Chronicle players still keep one in their deck with some gear cats, they can really still maximize from that. Is it worth it? I have no idea. To be honest, a lot of more play testing needs to be because one of the things that we've also seen is that there's Crest Jet. What's Crest Jet? Essentially we're using the OG Jet with the history collection on stride, but also using a lot of the time leap stuff as well. And taking advantage of double force marker with the crest as well, thanks to the pulsar or from the grade one that we got from the, the Chrono Jet set. So anything that's on that rear guard circle, essentially we'll see 25 plus K. So your grade ones by themselves are literally hitting 33 K. If you have columns are easily hitting over 40 K. <laughs> um, and then on Tirada calling a booster and abusing those force markers on top of that really is going to hit hard still. So it's totally up to the players if they want to continue to use this card or look into maybe some of the timely cards, whether they got retrained from Overdress or really dig back into G era and see what else is out there. There's definitely options for that too as well. So my thoughts going into the meta game, we are definitely going to see all of these clans in some form or fashion. Definitely going to see Gear Chronicle, definitely going to see Pale Moon, we're definitely going to see Narakami, and I'm sure we'll see some new Otama players as well. There's still a question about Gold Paladin, but I'm not 200% sure. But I can see also Gold Paladin being played as well. With other decks though, we still have other options such as Aqua Force, Grand Blue, and many, many, many other clans that have a lot of power buffs from this. I can't name them all, but I think it's a good step in the right direction. Sure, obviously there are certain people that would rather have other cards hit. Uh, I understand. The one thing that I wish though is that I wish we would have gotten this earlier. In fact, most of it is the same thing that J Japan got months ago. So for all the players, including myself, that had play tested with the unrestricted version of certain cards, now we we have to revisit some of the backup plans that we have essentially for the bcs season and you can make an argument that we saw it coming but we also you know just wish it happened earlier so we didn't waste any time <laughs> and really just explore more different options at that point right so that's my only complaint about that it should have been earlier rather than sooner i don't think it wouldn't have effective history collections like demand to be honest a lot of these cards aren't really from the set anyway so it, it doesn't matter let me know your thoughts on the video i like to engage with the community i hope you enjoyed this intro too as well are you excited to play premium in the next 
couple of weeks coming up with the BCS season starting. I know I am, and I'm excited to see the results that are coming from it, as to see all the different types of decks that people are innovating. If you want to support the channel, feel free to use the affiliate links with TCG Player, 50 Card Shop, Trading Card Mint, and Card Trader Zero. And also feel free to book a one-on-one -on -one Metafy session if you want coaching on a more one-on-one -on -one basis. Just happy to help out with the community wherever I can. Until the next one, amigos.